Hello grade 7 learners, welcome to my zone online school. My name is Pietres Futo and then together with me here I am joined by Pomeno. Let's, uh, let's welcome Pomeno. Let's sanitize our hands and then we maintain the social distance. Okay, science grade 7 lesson 3, sexuality and sexual health, STDs, HIV and AIDS. Okay, grade 7 learners, let's all turn to page uh, 22. First of all, we are going to look at our basic competence for today. The first basic competence says that a learner in grade 7 must be able to describe different ways of showing affections that are safe. And then the second one says that a learner must be able to describe sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, in terms of transmission, uh, preventions and then the consequence and then it says that Elena must be able to explain what HIV is and then the next one says that explain how HIV is transmitted and then name the body flow that can be infected with HIV and then the last one says that explain what HIV and AIDS are how they attack and then destroy the body and then that people with HIV usually don't show any sign or symptom but they can still spread the disease Okay, before we move on, we need to look at our keywords. The keywords are as follows. The first one says sexually transmitted diseases, STDs. These are the diseases that transmit from one person to another person through unprotected sexual intercourse. And then the second keyword, it says they are affection. Affection is a friendly or a loving feeling toward people around you. Thank you. Then, as it says, our first as, the, as our first competence says, Elena in grade 7 must be able to describe different ways of showing affection that are safe. So the, the different ways of, uh, the different ways of, show, uh, of showing affection that are safe are as follow. By hugging, holding hands, shaking hands, walking arm in arm, having picnics, having fun together, Kissing, but then as you are kissing, you must take some cautions because it can be that the person that you are kissing is having some, uh, if the person that you are kissing have an open lips, uh, have, have an open cut on his or her lips, then that, uh, and then you are also having an uh, open cut on your lips, that might uh, end up, that might end up uh, transmitting the virus. And then the last one, it says by giving presents, all of us, you know that, uh, especially on the 14th of uh, February, the, one, the day that we uh, know as uh, our Valentine's Day. Most of us, we give and then we receive presents from our loved one. As a result, that's also a way of showing affection, affection to our friends. Okay, let's move on. The next thing it says that we must be able to describe sexually transmitted diseases, STDs, in terms of transmission, prevention, and then consequence. So meaning that first of all, we are going to look at how these STDs they transmit. And then the second thing, we are going to look at how to prevent them from tra transmitting. And then the last thing, we are going to look at the consequence. But first of all, let's look at some examples of STDs. Examples of STDs are HIV and AIDS, the syphilis, the gonorrhea, the cancroids, and then the genital warts. Let's move on. Let's now look at how these diseases transmit. As it says, how can these diseases be transmitted or spread from one person to another person? These diseases can transmit or through exchanging of semen during sexual intercourse. Another way how they transmit, they transmit through blood or vaginal fluid contact. Thank you. Let's move on again. Let's now look at how, 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 we, can, uh, how we can prevent the spreading of these diseases. As it says, how can the spreading of these diseases be prevented? So you can prevent the spreading of these diseases by avoiding the conduct of body fluids, such as blood, semen, vaginal fluids, and then many more. And then another way of preventing the spread of these diseases is by use of condoms all times during sexual intercourse, or to make it short, by condomizing. And then what are the consequences of getting these STDs? So the consequences are as 
illness, or to say the causes illness, causes death, causes blindness, risk of cancer in women, genital warts, and then it also results in the uh, inability of having children, and then it also causes madness. Okay, then the next, then the next thing that uh, we need to look at, it says that as a learner in grade 7, you must be able to explain what HIV is. HIV stands for Human Immunodeficient Virus, and it's a virus that causes the disease AIDS. Okay, then we are moving on to the next thing that we need to know today. We are moving on to page 24. On page 24, it says that you must be able to explain how HIV is transmitted and how, how HIV is transmitted and HIV can spread. Okay, let's make a, let's make a change here. Where it's written, it says explain how HIV is transmitted and HIV can be spread quickly. I want all of us just to erase or to draw a line from end HIV can spread quickly from one person to another in the following ways. I want us to remove that one. Then you will just end where it says, explain how HIV is transmitted. Then that will be right. So, HIV is transmitted through sexual intercourse, or to be specific by saying, HIV is transmitted through unprotected sexual intercourse. And then another way it says, it, 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 it is transmitted through blood conduct, and then it, it is also transmitted from mother to child during birth. Then it, and then we are also required to know the body flows that can be infected with HIV. The body flows that can be infected with HIV, we speak of the semen, we speak about the vaginal fluids, or to say the discharges, we speak about the blood, and then we speak about the saliva. Those are the body fluids that can be infected with HIV. The next thing that you need to know in today's lesson is, is uh, what is HIV and then AIDS. HIV is a human virus, while AIDS is a disease caused by HIV. And then HIV stands for human deficient virus, while AIDS stands for acquired immune deficient syndrome. Then the last thing that you need to, uh, to look at today, it says that we must be able to explain, we must be able to explain how HIV and AIDS are attacks and then destroy the body, and then that people with HIV usually don't show any sign or symptom, but they can still spread the disease. Okay, how does HIV attack and then destroy the immune system? It says, when, the, when HIV or AIDS enters the body, it attacks the body's immune system, specifically the white blood cell. These white blood cells are the ones that protect our body from being infected by bacterials or viruses. However, when the white blood cells are attacked by HIV or AIDS, by HIV or AIDS, the body's immunity becomes weaker and then weaker. When the immunity becomes weak, the body will no longer be able to fight against illness. Therefore, different diseases such as TB will just pop in the body. That's how HIV and AIDS attack and then destroy the body. So in today's lesson, we have looked at, in today's lesson, we have looked at different ways of showing affection that are safe. Then he, had, then he said, and then he said, okay, so in today's lesson, we have looked at different ways of showing affections that are safe. And then he said that different ways of, uh, different ways of showing affection that are safe, we speak about hugging, kissing, shaking hands, and then many more. So long as you make sure that the thing that you are doing, it's safe, it will not result in you getting some other STDs such as HIV and AIDS. Okay, and then we have also looked at what? Sexually transmitted diseases, or to say STDs, in terms of how they spread, how to prevent the spreading of these diseases, and then the consequences. And then he said, these STDs, they spread from one person to another person through uh, through body floods, such as the semen, the vaginal floods, and then others. They also spread through unprotected sexual intercourse. And then you have also looked at how to prevent 
the spreading of these STDs. We say that you can prevent the spreading of these STDs by avoiding the conduct of body floods. And then you have also said that you can prevent the spreading of these diseases by using a condom whenever we are involved in sexual uh, intercourse. And then the next thing that we have looked at, we have looked at what, what is HIV. We say that HIV is a human virus that attack and then, they and then destroy the body's immune system. And then the next thing that we have looked at, we say we have looked at how HIV is transmitted and then you have looked at, uh, uh, at, the, uh, at the body flows that can be infected by the virus. So we say that HIV is transmitted from one person to another person by means of what? Blood conduct from child, from mother to child during birth and then through unprotected sexual intercourse. And then the last thing that you have looked, and then the last thing that you have looked at, we have looked at how HIV and AIDS attacks and then destroy the body's immune system. Then you say, once HIV and AIDS enters your body, it attacks and then destroy your body's immune system. Specifically what? Specifically the white blood cell. These are the cells that protect our that protect our bodies from being infected by different viruses and then many more. However, when these when these cells are then being what? When these cells are then being um, uh, attacked, it means that our body's immune system will not be able to fight uh, against different diseases. All right, Mr. Foto has prepared some questions for you here. And then let's all turn to page 25, where we will find our uh, questions. As it's written there, activity one, number one. Describe different ways of showing affections that are safe. I think that all of us, you can answer this question. Number two, describe sexually transmitted diseases, or to say STDs, in terms of transmission, prevention, and then the consequence thereof. And then number three says, explain what HIV is. The second last question says that explain how HIV is transmitted and then name the body fluids that can be infected with HIV. And then the last one says that explain what HIV and AIDS are, how they attack and then destroy the body. So I'm hoping that all of us will be able to answer these questions. But then if you happen to find out that you are struggling to answer one or two questions, please go through again. Thank you and then have a blessed day. But then don't forget to sanitize your hand and then you keep the social distance between you and then the next person. Thank you. Enjoy your day. Hi, everyone. My name is Shoshi, and I am Peck. My mommy used to tell me that um, I need to wash my hands and sanitize it to keep the germs away. Also, one thing you can remember is to sing the alphabet song while you wash your hands. Uh, after that, it will be super clean. I usually do it. Until next time, bye! Welcome to my zone online school. My name is Regan Lisoniso and welcome my friend here. His name is Pomwene. Before we begin with today's lesson, I'd like us to follow the COVID-19 rule regulations. First off, we start by sanitizing our hands. You rub the sanitizer in your palms, through your fingers and on top. And do not forget to check the social distancing. Make sure that the person is at least one meter from you. Today's lesson is sexuality and sexual health, focusing on STDs, HIV, and AIDS. A 
Okay, learners, let's turn to page 23. Let's start with today's competencies. By the end of the lesson, you should be able to explain that there is no cure yet for HIV AIDS, but there are life prolonging treatments. Discuss the myths and the taboos around HIV and AIDS. Some of the words that we are going to encounter today are taboo, which simply means a social or religious custom prohibiting or restricting a particular practice or forbidding association with particular person, place or thing. And myths, a widely held but false belief or idea. Explain that there is no cure yet for HIV, but there are life prolong prolonging, prolonging, prolonging treatments. There is no cure yet for HIV, but there is medicine for life prolonging treatments called antiretroviral or simply known as ARVs for treating HIV infections and to prevent it from becoming AIDS. Let's turn to page 24. Myth and taboos around HIV and AIDS. Discuss the myth and taboos around HIV and AIDS. There have been a lot of myths and taboos that spread about HIV and AIDS over the years. We need to be aware of these myths and taboos because wrong information is dangerous and can lead to further spreading of AIDS, uh, HIV and AIDS. For example, having sex with a virgin can cure HIV AIDS. Having uh, sex with a virgin cannot cure HIV and AIDS. HIV AIDS turns your skin lighter you can get HIV AIDS by sharing utensils. HIV AIDS patients are always thin. These are all, all false stories, but myth to mislead the nation, especially people that are easily convinced. Now let's look at some of the ways how HIV AIDS can be transmitted. Unprotected sex. When you practice unprotected sex, HIV, you are at risk of contracting HIV because bodily fluids are being exchanged. Drug addicts. During the use of um, drugs, your brain, this affects your brain and alters your judgment and lowers your, your, your decision making. So you are most likely to engage in unprotected sexual intercourse or share needles that may contain blood and we all know that HIV lives in in the, in the bodily fluids such as blood. Blood transfusion, mother to child a transmission of HIV can be during uh, pregnancy or at birth or through breastfeeding. Non-sterile instruments how is HIV AIDS not transmitted? One cannot contract or transmit HIV through touching, uh, through sharing of food, or through kissing. Why is it not possible for someone to get um, HIV through kissing? Because HIV cannot, uh, cannot live or cannot survive in saliva. Insect bites. This is also one way um, how HIV cannot be transmitted because insects do not have receptors or um, do not have receptors and cannot get infected by HIV. Therefore, they cannot transmit HIV virus because it's digested in their stomach. Or simply by taking a swim in the, in the pool with someone, you cannot get HIV AIDS. Let's turn to page 25 for our self-assessment. Discuss the myth and taboos around HIV and AIDS. Remember to sanitize your hands. Again, rub through your palm on top of your hand and through your fingers. Remember the social distancing, at least a meter between you and the next person. 
always wear your masks whenever you are outside. Until next time, have a great day. What is social distancing? Hi everyone, I am Zoshi and I am back. It literally just means that you need to stay home all the time and keep away from crowded places. And remember to keep your distance from your friends too. Everybody stay safe. Yay! Till next time. Bye! India's Ransomboar Reserve in Rajasthan is home to the rare Bengal tigers. Every year, John Isaac, an Indian-born photographer, travels from New York City to document the lives of these majestic animals. In the last 10 years, I think my interest has grown tenfold and I'm very particular about the survival of the tigers. His goal is to make sure that people everywhere know about the grave danger Bengal tigers face. Extinction. John holds seminars and photographic exhibitions from his visits to Ranthambore to raise awareness of the plight of these tigers. He's currently working on a book to document their dilemma due to an increasing human population encroaching on their territory. According to John and wildlife experts, each tiger needs as much as nine square kilometers to survive, just under four square miles. The relationship between tigers and people has always been difficult, but now, with much less territory to roam, Tigers often wander into human settlements. The conflict between the villagers and the tigers has always been there. And then uh, government tries to compensate if a tiger kills a goat or a, sh a cow. You know, they pay a certain amount to the villagers. In the past, tigers used migration corridors or routes followed by wildlife for travel between summer and winter habitats. Now these pathways have been taken over by people who use them as living quarters and to reap firewood. Uh, we are trying to work with the communities living around and trying to reduce their forest dependency so that we can uh, conserve this uh, corridor patch for the a smooth and easy movement of tigers. Jamuna Devi, a farmer, lives near one of the migratory corridors she used to depend on the forest for grazing pastures. Now, thanks to a World Wildlife Fund initiative, 
Jamuna no longer needs to rely on the forest for her family's survival. The secret, introducing new alternative crops closer to her home. The success of this project has led to even more changes. Jamuna decided to plant fodder for her cattle on her excess land to further preserve the habitat of the tigers. She has also switched to cooking gas so that she doesn't have to collect forest wood for fuel. Climate change also has a direct impact on the habitat of tigers. The last two or three years, they say, there's been a drought. The rains have not been regular. Climate change is a serious uh, problem in this country, even it's in, a, in the continent. So keeping these forest areas alive and protected is the only solution. Uh, this year we have raised a nursery of 10,000 uh, saplings. Forest department have shown their interest. They bought around 2,000, 3,000 saplings. The idea is to plant new trees to replace those lost to severe weather conditions and human activity. Poaching used to be a major threat to Bengal tigers. But thankfully, the number of big cats killed by poachers has plummeted due to measures implemented by law enforcement agencies resulting in less demand for tiger products. Especially the introduction of camera traps and digital apps, which automatically take photos of moving tigers and suspicious persons moving around in the forest. Every time I hear something like that, I feel so good, you know, in some ways, some things are working. And so this is what drives me to come and do this. In my lifetime, if the tigers uh, are extinct, I don't know how I'll handle that. This report was produced by Mary Ferreira for the United Nations. This morning woke up holding my head, hearing my heart beat all night long. Shades of this motel keeping me in bed, and reading the news just trying to stay strong. I need to just get up and take a deep breath, I keep it together, cause it's a beautiful.